Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega. I'm here with my co-host, Anel. Anel, glad to see you again. My pleasure. <laughs> All right, and today we're on episode number 86, Free Will, Humanity's New Consciousness. So before we get into this general theme, let's, let's talk first about what we mean when we say that we have a free will, why it's completely impossible, why this show is like amazingly important, Mm -hmm. And what's going on w with the topic? So now, why don't you start us off? What What do we mean when we say free will? Free will means you can make decisions that are independent of your genetics and conditioning, which is completely impossible and insane to think right, that you could do right. that. Right. Now, like, and answer the question, like, because some people think they have like a kind of a little free will. What What would you say to that? How do that you either have it or you don't. There's no gray area. There's, you either have a you have zero free will or. You, I mean, you either have it or you don't. If you have a little, it's like saying you have it. Exactly, exactly. So, like, some people say, it's well... It's a black or white issue. Yes, yeah. some people say, all right, part of, like, what I do is really, like, up to other stuff, but part of it is up to me. Right. And so why is the part that's up to me, like, impossible? Why can't it be up to us? Because it still has a causal history. Exactly. Everything is a cause and effect, so that's incoherent. All right, so we've gotten right through the, the definition of free will, and also another definition of free will is, like, that we would be ultimate ultimately responsible for what we do yes okay naturally if nothing's up to us we may want to hold ourselves responsible because we have to uphold order and the law and all that stuff but we have to remember we're not fundamentally responsible it's very important actually I like the word ultimate yeah fundamental yeah right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely uh, one, uh, one other definition of free will is people like to say that you know if you had free will, you could have acted otherwise in your past right and I always say, if you could have acted otherwise, why didn't you? You know, if something negative, so that, that, that's another incoherent argument. Exactly. And, and the other thing, the only way we could have acted otherwise is if the universe would have been otherwise. With we, we would have to be a totally different person. Exactly, exactly. And another thing, sometimes like people claim that we have a free will, and what they do is they change the meaning of free will. In other words, some yeah. people say, we have a free will if we can decide to do what we want to do. You know, but that's we're not, not refuting. Well. We're not refuting decision making. Exactly. I mean, like I always say, computers and robots make decisions. They don't have free will. They're programmed. So exactly, and we are programmed. It's a good way to explain it. Between our genes and our hered our environment, we're completely programmed. Okay, and um, so now, why is this show so important? Well, I mean, it's the biggest thing that's ever happened. Why is it the biggest thing? Because truth is so important, and we would like to find truth. And if there's no free will, or it's an illusion, or a myth, I think the people in the world would like to know. They should discover that. And I think we need to discover it to become a better species, yeah, more compassionate, less arrogance. I mean, people won't blame other people or, or themselves. They can blame the situation, you know, or blame the universe. But uh, like you said, they can still sue someone pragmatically. Or what did you say? As the proximate cause or the representative cause? But deep down, they know the person's not really fundamentally or ultimately responsible. They still have to take action to get what they deem as fair and right, but without all the acrimony and animosity of hating someone. Right. And again, you know, the, this is the biggest thing that biggest has ever thing happened. Ever. And, and why is it the biggest thing? Because, like, all right, think about this. Except that we found life on another planet. I mean, there could be, oh, or yeah. if I found a pill that made everybody happy. Right. But or, right now, it's the biggest. It's probably going to be the biggest thing. Right. No, no, we can go through this. Another thing that would be bigger if we found out for sure what happens when we die, or if we found, like, another a pill to make us all good. It would be up there with knowing the free will is a bubble. Yeah, right. It, it would be one of the, it's one of the major, it's the biggest thing right now. But, exactly. Right. That's the thing. So, like, you know, there, there are potential other things. If we, nuclear fusion might be a huge thing. I would say thing. the only thing in the history of time that was almost as big as when they found out the world wasn't flat and there was an, a, a new world, like Columbus came back and said to the Europeans, there's land, there's life over there. That's right. like finding life on a, you know, so there was a new, this is a new world. Right, right. It's really the way, it's not a new world, it's the world we have now, it's just nobody is accepting it as, you know, it's what we already have, we already don't have. We're not, disco we're discovering, but it's already there. Exactly. So it's, you know, it's right under our noses. <laughs> yeah. And We've that, never had free will. Yeah, and that's a curiosity. How we could have gone for centuries yeah. without figuring this out, who, who, you know, uh. who knows. But, all right, so it is the biggest thing ever because it changes our fundamental, you know, the first fundamental fact of being a human being is that we exist. The second fundamental fact is we do stuff. Our entire world has this completely wrong. That's how big this is. Okay, and, and I just want to, like, promote what we're doing 
for this because you want to know be before this show, before Anel's show in Manhattan, because we do a show called No Free Will. It's a live call in show. Wednesdays Wednesday. at 11. Wednesday, yeah, channel 2, uh, channel 56. MNN in. 2. Yep. So before that and before the meetup that, that, um, that I started in April 2010, nobody was talking about this, right? Now it's like everywhere. Can I show this? Sir? Absolutely. All right, I the, don't know which the cover um, over there. Oh, this one? The cover of Scientific American Mind. Who's in control? How physics and biology dictate your quote unquote free will. And this one came out in 2011. Free will, the illusion you can't live without. So these two major, you know, science magazines are acknowledging. It's not a question. You know, they're acknowledging yes. that free will is an illusion. Okay, and that's how big this is. Um, all right, so let's let's go right into the the, the topic now. Humanity's new consciousness. Oh, there it is. Okay, yes. All right, so basically we are at the dawn of a new era in human consciousness. Yes, we are. So the idea. Very exciting. Oh yeah. It may not happen as quickly as we want, but in the next five, ten years, this is just going to be a like you know snowball going down. It's just going to be we're at the tipping point, as you say. Yeah, and in terms of this tipping point, Sam Harris, three times best-selling New York Times author, came out with his book refuting free will in March of this year, 2012, and as a result of that, and the two magazine articles and our shows and stuff, this year there are 30, about 30. Um, Articles on this topic in major magazines like or uh, newspapers, the Washington Post, Los Angeles Times, New York Times, Psychology Today, Huffington Post, The Atlantic, The Guardian. So, like Sam Harris just took it beyond this tipping point, and so you can expect his during, book is called Free Will. Yeah, and it has marionette strings on it. It's a red cover. You can Google it. Right. The, Amazon good, the good thing about um, Harris is like he's an atheist, but he's also a neuroscientist. So and he's a PhD got in philosophy, also. Exactly. Yeah. So he explains this, and the thing is, like Harris's book is only like 88 pages, so like he covers it, but more like a pamphlet, right? <laughs> so this, this, like, if you're an author, if you want to, like, you know, actually kind of like help us because that's what that's what we're doing, you know, just promote this to the world, you know, the market is wide open for just like you know ways of, of explaining this to reach reach everyone with this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like we're at the dawn of. An era of new human consciousness. Now, so what does that mean? Um, basically, all right, till now, we have been compelled. It wasn't our choice. We were compelled by the universe to think that everything we do, think, feel, whatever, or most of everything, or some of everything, is up to us. That we decide, you know, what we're going to do and all. That it's, it's up to us, really. Nothing is compelling us. Now we realize that... No, that's completely false. We're puppets. We're we're robots. We're automatons. We're, you know, the we're manifesting the will of God religiously. You know, and again, this is a brand new consciousness. Amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's just go into you know every moment of the universe is dependent on the moment before. So human lives are no different. Every moment of our life. So even if you decide to change your conditioning, it's still a causal history of the moment before. So. There's no escape from it. Let's explain that. Okay, we got to explain okay. that because this is the... There's so many ways to refute free will. Like I heard someone the other day say, she never makes choices that are exactly 50-50, which is, you know, we, we could have, uh, you want to stick, and then you have the unconscious, subconscious. So we have 50 arguments, but let, you want to just stick with the simple ones, you know? Let's, let's go first, actually, this 50-50 one. Let's present oh, let's this. let's go that one, okay. Yeah, and, and but then we'll go to the causality because this is important because this is, you know, you want to understand why it's absolutely impossible that we could have a free will. So, like, with the 50-50 Well, thing, free will implies that choices are 50.00000 to the millionth inf to infinity to 50, you know, 50-50, and they're never exactly, you know, after you think about it, one decision is better than the other. Right. So it's pre predetermined. It was inevitable. You had to think about it. You know, you had to live your life. Right. Yeah. And think about it. With any decision, it's either a choice between A or B. Or, or many choices. Or many choices, or it's a choice between doing something or not. We're not doing something. Think of a menu in a restaurant. They're all there, but you have your preferences built up over time over what you call the hedonic imperative, what you have. Your taste buds were not freely chosen, so your preferences are built up over time, and you have no choice but to pick what you think is best for you at that moment. Right, and what happens? So you're, you're like pondering, let's say, the menu, and you're bet between one dish and another. The one that has the, the, that's going to be the greatest motivator, you know, they're competing motivations. One wants to, you know, be chosen. The other wants to be one. 
You, we're not. Yeah, one's in, healthier, one tastes better, one's cheaper, right? Right. We're not in control of this. We're not in control of what's going to be like the strongest motivator of, of any choice that we make. We can choose our preferences, but we can't choose what we prefer. That's <laughs> ex that's excellent. I love that line. Oh yeah, and the reason that's good again because some people say we have free will. I can't take can... credit for. It. I heard that from someone else, of course, because I don't oh, have yeah. free will, so I didn't just dream that up, right? <laughs> no, and it's true. nothing is this original. We're just uh, expanding on where other people left off. We've noticed that other the free will movement, you know, the illusion of free will movement, and we need to take it to the next level. Right, and that's a very important point. You know, people before us have said this. We're not, you know, it's been debated in academic circles for thousands of years, but it's never been taken to the people. Yep, Spinoza, right. Schopenhauer, right. Um, all these that, and that's that's exactly what we're doing. Like Augustine, that you he thought about this, Saint right? Augustine, yeah, yeah right, he's, Saint he's, Augustine. he's the one who came up with free will. But, so, yeah. but yeah, no, that's the thing. Like before our shows, before the meetup, before it was hiding in academic books, circles, it was yeah, it was like only the academics thought about. So this. we're taking it to the people. We can't take credit for it. The universe has compelled us to be the chosen ones to take this topic to Main Street, absolutely on Truth Avenue, absolutely. All right, so now <laughs> we, we we've gone through why you know when we make a choice, it's not fifty fifty. The one the the option with the strongest motivation, then it's not up to us, it's going to win out. Now, let's go at through the causality. Causality is extremely important. You want me to do it? Go ahead. Yep. Well, when, when you were born, you didn't choose your parents. And even if, you know, everything has to have to have a cause. Everything does have to have a cause. So you were born, that was the cause. And then you were conditioned for like 12 to 15 years by your guardian, your parents, cause and effect with uh, carrots and sticks, you know. Uh, being rewarded or being punished, you go into this cause and effect model, and then as you become a young adult, you still manifest this cause and effect, cause and effect. So every moment of the universe is dependent on the moment. So everything you do has a cause and an effect, and then you, you know, you, you make the decision based on that prior cause, based on that, and then as you go into the future, you can see that everything's predetermined. It's quite simple, actually. Right, right. I confuse people. It's very simple. Everything's either causal or random, or some combination of both, neither of which can prove free will. Any, any, a little bit of this, even if you have a little causal and a little random, you're you're not on the hot spot in any scenario. Right, and now think about that because some people it's logic, say, just logic. Right, some people say, well, not everything is causal. Some things will happen without a cause, which is nonsense. Really. Well, I'm saying uh, that's but, yeah, but sorry, but even no. if there's some randomness, even I don't believe in any randomness. Let's right. just give the people. Let's just say there's some randomness that doesn't prove free will. So you have a bunch of causes and a bunch of randomness, and you either have one or the other or a mixture of both. That doesn't prove free will in any scenario, even right. the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which is totally causal and based on probabilities, and probabilities are all causal. Right, that's very important. you got so to understand. I don't know. Indeterminacy would say random. That, okay, I don't so want to know. Because you know. some people will say because of uh, quantum mechanics, yeah, that, uh, you know, some things are random, meaning uncaused, and that allows for free will. Think about it. That makes things even worse for a free will. Because much worse. If things were happening randomly without a cause, they certainly be couldn't be happening because we were causing them. So, like, whether... You couldn't take credit for anything random. Right. All right, I want to go... Or like, be pen really penalized ultimately or fundamentally, yeah, like you oh said. Yeah. So, I, w I just want to go one more time through this causality mm -hmm. thing. Okay. We make any choice. It doesn't matter what it is, okay? We make a choice. It has to have a cause. And, again, if it didn't have a cause, we wouldn't be causing it. But it has a cause, and the cause is going to come... Let's say a moment before. Let's, in terms of causes, since we can't know what the causes are, and that'll give you a good idea of why we don't have free will, but because we can't know what the causes are, let's consider it in terms of a, uh, the brain state. In other words, like we make a decision, and the cause of that decision is our brain state yes, the idea. moment before, okay? Because that's the cause. So then, what's the cause of that brain state? The prior brain state, a moment before it's that. It's going to be the moment before that. Now, again, these causes are always going back a moment in time. So, like, then the cause of that brain state is the. And uh, even if you change, change is complete, a completely causal process. Even if you're changing, it's because of the moment before. So when people say, I changed this and that, like that one call the other night, the guy who does, you know, it's completely causal. The guy who was 69 years old, we heard the other right, night, right, that he was right. so much, and he did primal therapy. Yep. It was a causal process. He, he didn't get it, you know. It's right, in other simple. words, yeah, it's important. Yeah, it's important to know that, like, we don't have a free will, but that doesn't mean that we don't make changes. We That's make right. changes all the time. That's the what I'm trying point, to say. The point is these changes are not up to us in any sense. They're completely causal. Okay. So, all right. Now, the, again, with this causality, it goes back moment by moment, and it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop like five, ten minutes before the decision. It doesn't stop a year before the decision. It's a, you know, it goes back to before we were born. Yep. 
and, and, and ultimately, like, we can follow this chain of cause and effect on anything. And, and actually, another way of explain, explaining the causality is the state of the universe. You want to describe that? Just like well, I just want to say, whoever's watching this, what's the cause for you watching this program tonight? Answer it. Okay, what's the cause of that? What's the cause of that? Why are you wearing that shirt that you're wearing right now or those shoes? Or why are you sitting on that couch? How would you get that couch? What? Anybody watching can do it with their own life. If they can turn our, I mean, we don't recommend turning us off. Do it later. But just what is the cause of the drink that you had tonight? You know, you can do, if you don't know, then we can go into the unconscious and subconscious. The cause is still there. You just don't know what it is. Exactly. And, and like some people say, well, I don't know what the cause is for yeah. what I did this, but I know that I did it. <laughs> all right. But the, the problem with that is like, all right, but. Then they become a first causer. Exactly. And that makes all choices equal. You could wake up tomorrow. Okay, people say to me, if I don't have a free will, then the whole world's going to turn into chaos, right? right? If you had a free will, the world would be much, much worse because you would wake up and decide, I want to be a Filipino fisherman. I want to be a Russian uh, nuclear f scientist. I want to be an Argentinian soccer. But there would be no causality. So everybody, let's say you had a 30-year uh, guy who worked in the MTA in the subway system and he just suddenly woke up tomorrow and decided to be a Spanish soccer star. There would be no causality, so everybody would just be like, I want to speak this language. I mean, be, it would be total. It would be, nothing would get you closer to total chaos than actually having a free will because then you could just do whatever you want independent of your genetics and conditioning. Can you imagine every morning waking up and wanting to just, you know, be an Indian cricket player, for example, when you're a school teacher in Manhattan? I mean, how, you know, there would be no causality, correct? Exactly. You'd be a first causer. Yeah, yeah. Can you, I, I, I never brought that up before, but it would be... Believing in free will will take you into a, an existential meltdown much faster than not believing in free will. Right, because think another about it. Advantage. And, you know, what you just said just explains the incoherence of the term totally free correct. will. Because yeah. basically when you're saying you have a free will, you're saying you have a will that's free of reasons. Independent of, of genetics and conditioning. Right. So, like, you know, and again, if you... Um, if you say that it was your will, that, you know, well, I did it, and, you know, it was my decision, again, it's this chain of cause and effect, and we can't escape it. It goes back before we were born. So if there's free will, there wouldn't be any depression, suicide, or sadness. There wouldn't be any divorce. Everybody would be a perfect angel all the time. The whole thing doesn't make any sense. Anybody who's in any pain who decides, like, five years from now, like, they, they go through life, and they say, oh, I'm going to go to therapy. Why didn't you do that? You know, when they say, I'm healed, I went to this doctor, and I decided to, why didn't they do that before to get healed? I mean, why did they, because they didn't, they can't freely will their, their thoughts. Perfect. We had Can't self-cause it. I mean, we, yeah. get, we had a guy call so in. So obvious, yeah. We get, had a guy call in on our Wednesday show this Wednesday. He said, like, after 40 years with something, he finally decided to make a decision that yeah. saved his life. And he said the it was freely like will. Years, yeah. He was 70 He's, years old. Right. So what we asked him, yeah, all right, you, you, you did that of your own free will. Why didn't you do that 40 years ago? <laughs> you know? It wasn't available in a circuitry yet. Right, because think about it. If we had a free will, we would all be completely blissed out, happy every moment of the, of the day. We'd be complete angels. You know, it would be a completely different world because it would be mm -hmm. up to us. Correct. All right. Um, I want to, like, point this out because, like, again, we don't have, like, an advertising budget. This is our advertising. We, Anel and I, are pioneering this. In other words, the way Freud pioneered the, the unconscious, we have... Um, Darwin pioneered evolution, Newton pioneered the laws of physics, and Nell and I are pioneering this new consciousness. Right. And now, now again, like, we can't take, the reason, like, we're kind of, like, humble about it, right? We can't, like, boast because we know, we know it, it's not up to us. We right. know that, we're just like, along for the ride. Exactly. Um, now, what does this mean? I mean, we've, let's discuss this because we're, okay, our, so, our homo sapien designation will need to be changed. So we've already agreed that we're at the dawn of a new era. Everything is different now that we don't believe in free will. You want to change the word homo sapien? Is that what this... Either that, because like homo, homo sapien means literally knowing man, you know. And then you think about it. If we get the fundamental fact of why we do, do things wrong, the entire civilization, we can't be very knowing, you know. I see what you're saying. So either, either that changes or what, what might want to change is like, you know, before us, there were Neanderthals. Now we're Cro-Magnons. So we, we may need to have a new name for this new man, this hu human kind. So you're seeing, saying when we get, do the show and becomes popular and nobody believes in free will, we're going to be a different species? I think so. That's how big this That's change is. That's what you're is. saying. Okay. Yeah. Well, we don't have to think of the name right now. We're just putting it out there to the world that, that we're going to have to have a new name because we have to have a symbolic vocabulary change if something has changed. I mean... 
We may look the same because the Cro-Magnon went from, from not standing to standing slowly, but now the mind is changing. So we would like the history books to call our species a different name when everybody gets a free will is an illusion. Right. That's what you're, you're saying, right? Absolutely. Because so we want to designate it in time that now we're new, new, uh, nouveau homo sapiens or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, it right. would just, it would have to like... Neuro, maybe for neurons. It uh, would have Adam's to acknowledge how, how huge, how fundamentally new and different this new consciousness is because yeah. again like the difference between free will it's surreal actually there's a pre-made movie it's surreal yeah it is surreal it's, it's so like it kind of makes time like you have a weird relationship to time because it's all predetermined it's anyway sorry it's a tangent. no no it, it's completely surreal. surreal and that's what makes like it what so we're going to say in a minute was meant to happen yes yes <laughs> even and that like, right and, and that no it's kidding right <laughs> <laughs> no, and like, no, and for the audience, you guys are watching this, right? It's so surreal. What you're thinking right now, you were destined, you were compelled to think from the very beginning of time. Yes. Everything, everything you did today, you know, it the was exact moment intense. of your death is predetermined because it's a causal chain. Right now, Shakespeare said, like, we're all actors on a That's stage. That's pretty right. I like that actually. Right. He's not that far off. No. Well, he got it, but like, it's even more so because, like, with yes, the, even more so. No, because think about it. If you're an actor. If you're an actor, you get to, you can get to interpret your role some somewhat, yeah, it's right? Yeah, true. Yeah. With this, we don't even get to interpret like how we say whatever we do, who we are. Everything is completely determined, completely not up to us. That's that's that. It is surreal. Okay. You know, I can't see the clock. I have no idea how much time. That's right. Oh, it's like we got about six minutes okay. left. Okay. The camera's blocking. No, that's all right. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, about six minutes. Um. Okay, and as we were saying before, this is this is the biggest thing that's ever happened. It's a brand new consciousness. What's that quote you have from John Searle? Uh, is that is that at the beginning of the show? It's at the beginning what of the show. What does it say? Say again. Uh, all right, uh, Susan Blackmore, who's a philosopher, she wrote a book called Conversations on Consciousness. She asked this guy John Searle, an eminent philosopher, to comment on the prospect of free will being shown to be an illusion. Right. And now, John Searle, incidentally, believes we have free will, but he said to the extent that happens, that would be a bigger revolution in our thinking than Einstein, Darwin, Copernicus, Newton, and Galileo. That's Very how nice. big it is. So, like, it's, it's actually bigger than, than all of them put together because that's, <laughs> you know, it's a completely different way of viewing the world. And then he goes on to the, the next statement that I have on my website. I don't have it on the show right now. It says, like, it would fundamentally alter our relationship with the universe. That's the thing. And, again, this nothing bigger has ever happened. And, again, unless we, you know, create nuclear fusion. Could you talk about why it would be a better world? Because yeah. a lot of people tell me it would be a worse world. It would be chaos. But talk about what's better about it. Excellent. All right. Yeah. All right, so like right now, let's say you're married, you got kids, a family, whatever, and somebody does something wrong, okay? Right now, we're hardwired, we're programmed, we're conditioned to say, well, you're bad, you did something wrong. We're conditioned to blame and accuse and, you know, say, well, you're, you know, you deserve punishment, you know? And in some cases, hell. Yeah. Like Bernie Madoff or whatever. The, the yeah, Penn like State with, with the religion. Or, you yeah. don't believe a certain thing. You're so evil that you deserve to suffer eternally. This is, this is the, what we have now. This is the result of free will belief. Free will paradigm, right. Now, let's say over the next 5, 10 years, 20 years, everybody gets it. Nobody would, would even begin to believe we have a free will because we understand it so completely. Somebody in your family does something wrong. They know it wasn't their fault. You know it wasn't their fault. So, you know, if it's wrong, it may have to be changed. Let's say um, your son, like, comes home late and doesn't call or something. I don't okay, know. Okay, good, good example. Right. So, like, you say, listen, we realize it's not your fault, and, and you know, we may have to kind of, like, dock you for, for a day or so, whatever. But, like, this would be done with complete compassion, complete understanding. And now, like, now consider the... Um, what would, what would, and also, you wouldn't rank destinies. If you get older and you're like, you're, uh, you're high school, you go to your high school reunion and all your friends are making a lot of money and you're not, it's not your fault. You can't rank karmic destinies because they're in a different, they have different causality. So you would have a lot more peace of mind forgiving yourself for all the stupid mistakes you made because you, they were inevitable. So you don't, the self hatred would go away, which would cause, self hatred causes depression, causes suicide. So I think you could wipe out like 99% of suicides when people realize they didn't. Nothing that happened, the divorce, car, anything they did that was stupid and silly, it wasn't their fault. I yeah. think it's, a, it's a very vindicating and oh, exonerating. Yeah. 
Think about on it. On a very deep soul level. Yeah. Like you said, pragmatically, you still blame the son for not calling, but you realize he was just representing his karma, so he didn't know any better. Right. So he, he, could, could, he couldn't so have So you pragmatically, better. whatever the word is, you... Is pragmatic the word we're going to use for right, that? Yeah, like you absolutely. still You still sure. dock him, but... He doesn't feel bad on a deep level that he's a bad person. Exactly. Because he couldn't rise above. He, he can't make a decision independent of what he's learned and what and his genetics are. Right. And if they, you didn't teach him to call you enough and didn't reward him or penal, he wouldn't know. So it's not deep down his fault, but you have to do the conditioning as right. a parent. And again, both the parent That's a good and, point. Like and the that. child would know that the child had absolutely no choice but to come home late and not call. That he couldn't have done otherwise. <laughs> you right. Know? And, that's and you definitely don't condemn him to, to, to eternity. I mean, do you know how long eternity is? It's infinity. But I mean, you're going to go to hell for doing something wrong when you had no choice in the matter? It's crazy. I know. And, and let, let's crazy. deal with Crazy. Believing in free will is the most insane, crazy... I don't know if I'm allowed to say it's the ultimate in bullshit. Oh, we're on the, I am allowed to say It's the ultimate <laughs> in bullshit, folks. You don't have a free will. That's why this show is called No Free Will. Just say no to free will. It is. And, and talk it's about nuts. It, it is. It, it, you couldn't be more insane than believing you have free will. It's true. <laughs> like because like, you, if you believed you were Napoleon, but you understood... You'd be less insane. It would be. It would be. <laughs> right. I went out to dinner with Alexander the Great last night. That would be less insane than believing I'm, I have free will. It's That's true. how insane it is. It's true. Again, it's, it's, it's getting <laughs> the <laughs> fundamental reason why we do things completely I don't really wrong. actually think that anybody believes in free will. I think it's some sort of joke. I mean, nobody could they be that. I mean, I don't want to, could they be that dumb? And again, we are that. It's not dumb. their fault. That's the thing. That's the thing. You know, we are to, to I not think it's get. It's a joke on us, really. To not get that that everything has a cause, and because everything has it's a cause, so we simple. have free will. It is. It's amazingly simple that we don't get this. It's uh, the universe has made us amazingly mm -hmm. dense on this. You Some know, people like, like to say they have a spirit or a soul or something that rises above everything. I mean, this, right? We got about fifty seconds. No, you don't. We're gonna get to, well, watch the next show because we don't. It's uh, yeah. That's a good idea. Right, all right. I have no choice but to give you uh, suspense. But yeah. we need to talk about that because that's another answer I get. I have a soul or a spirit, and that has free will. Right, well, the quick answer. The quick answer to that is let's say we have a soul or a spirit, right? That soul makes a decision. It has a place in time. It happens at a certain moment in time. But if, ha if it happens at a certain moment in time, it's subject to this physical law of causality that governs everything. It governs the entire universe. And why would a spirit or soul not learn from its mistakes? Why would it? And, and also, if a soul or spirit was making decisions... On your behalf, you would feel more out of control than ever because you're exactly. not. Yeah, they're not in control of that, so that doesn't make any sense. All right, we got about ten seconds, so like, I hope you guys better understand why this overcoming free will is the biggest thing ever, and why free will is completely impossible. Thanks for watching.